Hi everybody, welcome to Fine Motor Fridays. My name is Erin and today I am going to show you how to make a couple projects using a cereal box. So today, what I'm going to be showing you, you can use with a cereal box, you can use with a different cardboard box about the same size or even a little bit smaller. So if you don't happen to have a cereal in your house, that's okay. The two projects that we will be doing today, you can make using one cereal box, which is very convenient. So the two projects that we are going to be making today are a salt tray and a puzzle. The first one I'm going to show you how to make is the puzzle. So what you're going to need to make the puzzle is the cereal box and your scissors. So what you're going to do first is you're going to cut out just the front of the cereal box. So after you cut out the front of the cereal box, you'll notice that there's still this tab on the front. I'm actually going to cut this off as well. And I am going to save this piece for our other project and I will show you why in a minute. So now that you've cut out the front of the cereal box, the next step that you're going to do is you're going to flip it over and you're going to draw the lines on the back to make the puzzle pieces. So as you can see, I finished drawing the lines for my puzzle. I happened to make an eight piece puzzle. You want to keep in mind that this is for your kids. You don't want the pieces to be too small and you don't want the puzzle to be too difficult for them. So after you draw the lines for your puzzle, there are two options. You can cut the pieces out or you can let your child cut the pieces out depending upon their skill level with scissors. You want to keep in mind that if you're having your child cut out the pieces, you want to make sure that they have one hand on the scissors, one hand on the cardboard. You want to make sure both of their thumbs are pointed up so they can see them. And you want to make sure they are cutting away from their bodies. So now that you have your puzzle pieces cut out, it is time to assemble. Now that we've completed our puzzle, we can go on to the next project, which is a salt tray. Now, if you don't know, a salt tray is something that I use as an occupational therapist to help with pre-writing and handwriting. So for example, I happen to make another salt tray out of a paper plate and some construction paper. So all I did was glue the construction paper to the plate. What you do is you put the salt in the plate, make sure there's enough to cover the whole bottom, and then children practice either using their finger or something else to copy or imitate letters, shapes, numbers, lines on top of the tray. So what we're going to have to do first is reassemble this box. So that's why I kept this piece from the other project because I'm going to be taping this back onto the box. I am just using painter's tape because that's what I have available. You can use whatever tape you have at home or if you happen to have a hot glue gun that could probably work as well. Oh, 
So the reason that I kept that extra piece from the puzzle part of the project is because without this piece, this side would have been a lot shorter than the other sides. So I wanted to make sure that it had enough height for when we put salt into the box, because as we know, children um, can be messy. So on to step two. So for step two of the project, you are going to need construction paper. Now with this project, you can use one piece of paper or you can use multiple. For mine, I am going to be using multiple, but you can just cut one piece of paper and stick it into the box if you'd like. But I want to kind of make a rainbow effect in the bottom of the box. So I'm going to be using all of these colors for my salt tray. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just placing the paper in the bottom to see how much I'm going to have to cut off. This does not need to be pretty, so I'm not going to measure it out or draw a line or anything. I'm just going to eyeball it. So now that the paper I know is going to fit in the bottom of the box, I can go ahead and cut it the other way to make stripes that I'm going to glue down in the box. If you'd like your child to help with the project, you can certainly draw lines on the paper for them so that they can, again, practice their scissor skills. And you're just gonna have them cut right across the paper. Again, make sure when they are cutting, both thumbs are up and they are cutting away from themselves. <laughs> So for this next step, you're going to need your colored strips that you just cut out. You're going to need a glue stick or tape, depends upon what you have available at home, and your assembled box. So what you're going to do is you are going to arrange the paper in the bottom of the box, and you can arrange it however you would like. I like to overlap the pieces a little bit so that salt doesn't get underneath the paper. Um, but I'm not gluing yet. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to lay them out. Okay, so I think that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these pieces down now. salt tray assembled, we can do the fun part with our kids. So what you're going to need is some salt. This is just regular table salt that I had put on a Ziploc bag for work. If you don't have salt, but you happen to have sprinkles, you can also use those too because they're small and fine. So they work similar to how the salt works for this project. So all you need to do is pour the salt into the salt tray like so. Spread it out just a little bit. So now that your salt tray is assembled, it's ready for your child to use. Now, there are different ways that your child can use the salt tray. First, they can use their finger to draw shapes, letters, numbers, whatever they'd like in the salt tray. Or if you have Q-tips available at home, you can use a Q-tip. 
One thing that you can do to make sure that your child is using an appropriate grasp, because we would like them to grasp the Q-tip how they would a pencil, is you can cut it in half or just pull it apart by twisting. And this method allows your child to grasp it like they would a pencil but it doesn't let them use all of their fingers like many kids do at this age to hold it. So that's why using a smaller Q-tip is effective and they can still draw in the salt tray like they would with a pencil or their finger. If you do have a pencil at home, I like to use one that is dull on the end because I don't wanna draw all over the bottom of the salt tray. And with this, they can use this end or this end. I just happen to have a funky little eraser on the top. And if you have paintbrushes at home as well, they can use a paintbrush to draw in the salt tray. I would not recommend getting it wet though, because then it's gonna mess up the tray and get the salt all gross. Now, depending upon your child's skill level, I like to have the kids at work either imitate or copy images. So if I was gonna have a child imitate an image, I would have them watch me draw the image first. So I would draw the image for them so that they can see how I am drawing it, how the letter or number or shape is formed. And then I would have them do it in the salt tray. So they can take whatever utensil they're using, paintbrush, pencil, Q-tip, or their fingertip, and then try and imitate it in the salt. Now, once they draw the image that you're looking for, or if they're just kind of free playing, all you have to do is shake the box and the image goes away. Or if I'm going to have a child copy the image, I already have the image on a piece of paper for them. So they're not watching me draw the image. They're just looking at the picture and then trying to copy it in the salt tray. Thank you for watching. I hope you and your kids have fun making these projects together. Happy Friday.